One of the most unique things about the guitar is that you can play it as a solo instrument. Because of this, many guitar players experiment playing solo guitar, either as part of an arrangement or as an entire performance. In this video, I'm going to share with you five solo jazz guitar records that are well worth checking out. Hey everybody, this is Jamie Holroyd helping you learn jazz guitar. Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to share with you my favourite five solo jazz guitar albums. These albums span the last 50 years of recorded jazz guitar. The very first one comes from the 1970s and the most recent one was released in 2012. So there's a range of solo jazz guitar records in this list. Just before we begin, if you would like to get a free beginner jazz guitar guide, then you can do so by checking out the link below. I'd just like to say that the albums on this list obviously start at around 1970 and basically come up to present day, but solo guitar was played much earlier before this, but as far as I know, it was hard to find full albums of solo jazz guitar playing. Of course, if you go right to the very beginning, players such as Eddie Lang and Django like to play a solo, and I do like a lot of their pieces as well, but this list, just to keep it simple, is purely recorded solo jazz guitar albums. Let's begin by addressing the elephant in the room, which is of course Virtuoso by Joe Pass. Joe Pass released a series of albums with the Virtuoso title, but the debut Virtuoso album that was released in 1973 is my personal favourite that I've learned a lot from. Virtuoso was one of the very first jazz guitar albums that I heard. When I first heard it, I was initially quite intimidated by it. I was just getting into jazz guitar at the time and I thought I'm never going to be able to play jazz guitar like this. It wasn't until a couple of years well into my playing that I was really able to understand some of what Joe was doing. Perhaps the biggest thing that I've learned from this album is how to reharmonize standards. Before listening and transcribing some of Joe's work on this, I might just play Have You Met Miss Jones or something like that. As you would see it, on a lead sheet. So this is like a standard lead sheet of Have You Met Miss Jones, but when you transcribe and listen to what someone like Joe Pass does on this tune, then you might get some chord changes that look more like that. So that's what I got. Joe was a master at reharmonization. Obviously you've got the fast blistering single lines as well. If you haven't heard this album and you are serious about jazz guitar, then do not wait any longer and go and check it out. For the next example, we're fast forwarding 10 years and going to 1983. In that year, the jazz guitar player Barney Kessel released an album that was just entitled Solo. It is not hard to find solo examples of Barney Kessel's work. He was actually known for making beautiful guitar trio arrangements in the 50s with Ray Brown and Shelley Mann, and he would often start a lot of the songs solo, but as far as I know, this is the only record which is just him playing by himself. The solo playing on this record is not as technical as, say, the Joe Pass album, but that's not the point. That wasn't Barney's style. What you'll find here is tasteful arrangements that are really enjoyable to listen to from start to finish. So if you don't have this one in your collection already, then check out Solo by Barney Kessel. Ironically, the next album is also released 10 years after the previous entry. This album is called Dedications and Inspirations and it's by the jazz guitar player, Jim Hall. As the title suggests, Dedications and Inspirations contains music dedicated to Jim Hall's influences. You've got a range of musical artists here, such as Sonny Rollins, Arnett Coleman, and Charlie Christian, but the interesting thing about this record is that Jim Hall actually dedicates some of the music to other things that have actually influenced his work as an artist. These can be anything such as paintings to Japanese culture. It's really interesting to think about how these things can influence music and composition. The obvious influence of most guitar players is other guitar players and musicians, but what's really interesting to me is how you could look at a painting and be inspired to play some music because of looking at a painting or living in a certain part of the world or going to see something. That can influence you just as much as music can, and that's what Jim Hall has tried to reflect in this album. Dedications and Inspirations contains a much more diverse set list than the first two records. You also get to hear Jim Hall use effects pedals such as a whammy pedal. My favourite track in which he uses a whammy pedal is the tune called Micro, which you've just got to check out if you haven't heard it already. And there's a few tunes where Jim Hall also uses a loop. I think this is a really interesting record because Jim Hall has always been someone that's about pushing the boundaries and himself as a musician. 
He could have easily kept on playing exactly as he had been doing before this, but that's the interesting thing about Jim Hall. If you think about his first record as a leader, where he was playing with bass and drums, that's very straight ahead. And then the record, Live 75, is a little bit more free, and it's kind of going with what a lot of jazz players was, was doing back then. And this album is keeping with his tradition. It's almost like he was never content with just kind of settling for exactly what he was doing. He was always pushing himself, looking for more music. And this is a really great example of Jim Hall's approach to that. The next album on the list is called Ballads by Derek Bailey and it was released in 2002. I'm guessing that most of you have not heard of the jazz guitar player Derek Bailey. So this is a really good opportunity for me to promote a bit of his work because I think he was a fantastic jazz guitar player that should be more well recognised. He was actually born in Sheffield, which is not too far from where I am, but he made a name for himself as a free jazz guitar player when he moved to London in the 1970s. Ballads is a fantastic opportunity for you to hear how a free musician interprets jazz standards. There's sometimes a negative connotation that free musicians are just making things up or that they're faking their way through chord changes and this really does prove all those theories are completely wrong because when you listen to Derek Bailey play on this he has a beautiful interpretation of all the tunes and they're all complete with his signature guitar style. You hear some beautiful harmonics, you hear a diverse range of tones from the guitar. I was reading the album notes to this and apparently he actually decided to go with a guitar that was completely unconventional in jazz guitar situations just to force himself to play how he wanted to play and I think that's such a cool thing. I wish I knew exactly what guitar he used on this because incidentally it's a really great sound. So that's my recommendation for the fourth album on this list, Ballads by Derek Bailey. The final album is called One by Jonathan Kreisberg and it was released in 2013. This album to me demonstrates everything that is possible in a solo jazz guitar situation. You've got extremely fast runs, reharmonizations, metric meter playing, all done with absolute perfect execution. In fact, I don't think I could find or hear one mistake on the entire record. It really is a masterclass in solo jazz guitar playing. You've got some straight ahead jazz guitar sounds, which Jonathan used his uh, Gibson ES175 for, but there's also some tracks that have acoustic guitar featured on them and also different guitar effects. So it's really an interesting record from start to finish. For me, I really like some of the lines that Jonathan Kreisberg plays on this. They're really difficult and some of them take me a while to, to figure out. But here's one that I transcribed a couple of years ago, which I think was from Summertime. <laughs> So those are my favourite solo jazz guitar albums. What I'd really like to know is what is your favourite solo album? Which albums and players have I missed? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you found this video useful, then please subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you as always to my patrons for supporting this video. And if you would like to continue supporting me making videos like these, then you can sign up via the link below. Thanks for watching.